So hello again YouTube, my name is Hans and welcome to my channel and to this episode of Darktable Insights. Darktable is one of the best free tools for organizing and editing your photos. First of all today I'd like to say a huge thank you to all my subscribers. There are more than 250 of you by now, so thank you very much. And if you're not subscribed yet, just go ahead and do it. Today's topic is black and white. Black and white is a genre as old as photography itself. Back then it was the only way. If you wanted colors, you had to get your crayons out and color the print. These days we do it the opposite way. We take a color image and make it black and white. Of course black and white means essentially that there's no color. But you can't make a great black and white image by simply turning the saturation to zero. The colors are an important part of a color image and if you remove them you will have to compensate with something. And what is left when you take the colors away is contrast. To make a striking black and white image we often have to increase the contrast not only for the whole image but also locally. Since our favorite image editor is Darktable we have several tools at our disposal for making a good black and white image. This is an image I was very pleased with as a color image. It is a composite of two images taken without moving the camera, but one had me in it and the other had these nice clouds. I made a quick edit to the original images just to even out exposure and white balance. And after compositing I just tweaked the white balance a bit, like this. This it was what it was like, I tweaked it to this. And then I uh, adjusted local contrast for the whole image. I think you can barely see it. It's a little bit and also a bit on the building to make it pop a bit more. Now I'll make a black and white version of it. Before I remove the colors, take a look at my red anorak. The contrast to all the blues in the image makes it really stand out, so it's easy to see where I sit. But when, when we remove the colors with, for example, contrast brightness and saturation module, just remove the colors like this, the anorak blends much more into the background, because the brightness is rather similar. Also the clouds in the sky could do with a bit more pop. Now how do we fix that? We do that by manipulating the brightness of the separate colors. So first let's take a look at the channel mixer. I have it in my favorites. Here. If we click on the little menu icon here, we get to a list of presets. And uh, the channel mixer and a few other modules have a number of built-in presets. We select black and white. Then we click on the destination and change it to grey. That means that we are just the grayscale output. And the preset has some values set here that makes up a nice black and white image. These numbers on the different channels, they have to uh, always add up to 1. So 0.210 plus 0.720 plus 0.070 that makes one in total. That will keep the total brightness of the image uh, as it was. So if you increase one of them then you have to decrease one or both of the others. So now let's increase the red channel a bit. The whole image gets brighter but my anorak is affected much more than the rest and so are the clouds too. So we can leave the green for now and we reduce the blue. Then we see that the, the overall brightness goes down again, but the clouds and the anorak stays brighter than, than they were before. Now let's uh, switch off the channel mixer and take a look at another way of making black and white. For a new user of Darktable, this might be the most intuitive way, except for just reducing saturation. 
because of its name. It's the monochrome module down here. So why is there a bunch of colors in a mo module for monochrome? Well, think of it as a variable color filter. When you use black and white film, you can change the look of your image by using colored filters on your lens. A yellow filter will make the blue sky darker, a red filter will make skin tones lighter, and so on. So place your mouse cursor inside the circle and use the mouse wheel to make the circle smaller. Then grab the circle and drag it towards the red area. Now you see the image gets darker and mostly in the blue areas. And if you make the circle even smaller, then the effect is stronger. You should experiment by dragging the circle around and also changing the size of it to see the different effects. Down beneath here there's a highlight slider. You can drag that up if you want to increase the highlights again. My favorite tool for adjusting contrast by color is the color zones module. So we can turn off the monochrome and then we go to the color zones. Here you can see I've made a few preparations. I'm in the lightness tab and I have uh, reduced the blues and also enhanced the reds. So if I turn on the module, it's not very nice on the color image. But I can go into the saturation tab and here I can reduce the uh, saturation for all the colors. This is a bit fiddly, so you should probably make a preset for it. So you don't have to do this every time. Just make sure everything is completely at zero. Now we see in the black and white image that the blue sky is quite dark. And both my anorak and the clouds have become brighter. Also the lights inside the building have got a bit extra. The thing to be aware of when you use the color zones module in this way is that it is quite easy to enhance noise. If we now zoom in to 100% we see a lot of noise, especially in the sky. In this image we can fix this by using the non-local means denoising module. If you haven't done so already I recommend that you watch episode 13 for a tour of all the different noise reduction tools in Darktable. The default settings seem good at first glance, but if we take a look at the more detailed areas, we see that we are losing some detail. I found out I could turn the strength down to 4% and still retain a good noise reduction in the sky. Then some details start to come back. I could also have used a parametric mask to exclude dark areas from the noise reduction. But here we are with a nice black and white image. So the last things I will do to top it off is to take a couple of tone curves to adjust the contrast. I have one here that enhances the contrast quite a bit. Then I have another one here that I have a gradient on the bottom part. It just closes down the bottom here a little bit and I'll make a third one New instance, I'll use a drone mask, and ellipse, put it here on this cloud, and then just pull it down a little bit. So that it doesn't clip so much. Then I think this image is just about perfect. That's all for today. Next time I'll talk about presets and styles. What are they and what are the differences? If you like this channel, then hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an episode. I'd also be very happy if you check out my other outlets online. All links are in the description. And if there's anything you'd like me to talk about about Darktable, then please let me know in the comments. So see you next time. Bye!